welcome to the next lecture in electric circuit analysis we were discussing the measuring devices we discussed the ohmmeter ammeters and in this particular lecture we'll focus on watt meters so previously we discussed volt meters too so watt meter is basically an instrument to measure the power which is delivered by the source and the dissipating element so whenever we required to measure any power which is delivered by the source or it is dissipating in any element like a register we need a watt meter since power is a function of both the current and the voltage four terminals must be connected we know that the power is basically the product of voltage into current and if we have a single phase system then it is power factor will be multiplied to get the power so since power is a function of voltage and current and each voltage and current will have two terminals each so total four terminals will be required for the power measurement now from here we can see how the power is measured using a physical watt meter so this is the watt meter which is used in the laboratory for measuring the power and if we have a dissipating device like a register then we can measure that power using a watt meter which is having a four terminal device now the watt meter will have two different type of coils which is known as the current coil and the pressure coil or the voltage coil so we will see into deep how this current coil and pressure coil are connected and what is their role to play now if the current coil and potential coil potential coil is also known as the voltage coil of the watt meter are connected as shown in the figure which was shown then there is a upscale reading so whenever we connect the four terminal device using a current coil and the pressure coil then there will be an upscale reading with the connection shown in the figure a reversal of either coil will result in below zero indication it means that if there is a reversal of the current coil or the pressure coil then the indication will be below zero indication so that will uh, tell you that the connection has to be reversed three voltage terminals may be available on the voltage side to permit a choice of voltage level so we can choice between different voltage levels so if we want to measure anything between 0 to 200 volt we can choose one terminal if there is a measurement point of 400 volt then we can choose between 0 to 400 volt or 600 volt then we can choose one more terminal so generally a watt meter will have different terminals which represent different voltage level on most watt meters the current terminals are physically larger than the voltage terminal so we can see that the current coil and the pressure coil or the voltage coil be physically larger so current coil will be larger than the voltage coil and this is due to to provide the safety and to ensure a solid connection so that the connection is proper now here again we can see from here we saw that there is a upscale reading when is the upscale reading when the connection is being shown as given in the figure so here you will be having a full positive terminal and here you will have a negative terminal in such case the current will flow into the positive terminal and it will come out of the negative terminal and in that case the watt meter reading will be the upscale reading now how do we classify the watt meters or what are the types of the watt meter so basically watt meters are of two different types one is known as the electro dynamometer watt meter or simply dynamometer watt meter which is used to measure the dc power and ac power so when we require to measure any type of power whether it is a dc or a ac we prefer electro dynamometer watt meter induction watt meter on the other hand can be used to measure only ac power so these are the two different watt meters which are used to measure the power the most famous one is basically the electro dynamometer watt meter induction motor induction watt meter are used in some cases now if we see the construction of these watt meters which is the dynamometer type and induction type which will be discussed more into details in the measurement uh, chap measurement uh, subject here for the electrical science or the electrical circuit we will go only 
for the overview. So in the dynamo meter type watt meter we can see that there will be current coil uh, which is the fixed coil and there will be a moving coil which is basically the potential coil and which is connected with the multimeter or the resistance to limit the current and there is a scale to show the deflection of this arrow. Now on the other hand the induction time watt meters we will be having uh, an aluminium disc which is rotating between two magnets which are basically the series magnet and the sunt magnet and due to the induction principle the deflection is being given in the wattmeter to show the reading. Now we will focus our discussion more into electrodynamometer wattmeter. So here the field is produced by the current carrying moving coil tries to come in line with the field produced by the current carrying fixed coil and a deflecting torque is exerted on the moving system. So basically the field is of two types that is produced in the electrodynamometer wattmeter. One field is produced due to the current coil and other field is produced due to the voltage coil and the interaction of the two field results in the deflecting torque. This deflecting torque is basically with the help of a pointer and this is showing a reading on the wattmeter scale. So the deflection takes place in the pointer. So this pointer is the one which will show you the reading on the wattmeter. Now the fixed coil which is the current coil is split into two equal parts. So we can see here the fixed coil or the current coil is split into two equal parts and they are placed parallel to each other. Whereas to avoid the hysteresis effect, fixed coils are air cored when used for AC. So we know that dynamometer are basically used both for AC as well as DC. So when you require to use for AC, there will be an hysteresis effect. So the fixed coils are air cored coils rather than any ferromagnetic material. So fixed coil is connected in series with the load. We have seen that at the end there will be a load. So fixed coils which are uh, parallel at the two parts are basically connected in series with the load and it carries the total circuit current. So the total amount of the current which is flowing in the circuit is being carried by the current coil. So it is carrying the full load current and then the current coil has to be made up of thick wire because the total current is being carried by the wire. So its physical dimension has to be thick. Now the current flow through them is very high. So few turns are sufficient to produce the desired magnetic field. We know that in order to produce the magnetic field there has to be a current and the winding has to be some turns. So here the turns has to be few because the current is more and the winding is of thick wire. A high resistance is connected in series with the moving coil. We have seen that the pointer which is connected with the winding which is the pressure coil or the voltage coil and this is the moving coil. There is a resistance which is connected in series with it. These resistance will limit the current which is flowing through the pressure coil. By limiting the current the moving coil is made lightweight which in turn increases the sensitivity of the instrument. So the current through the pressure coil or the voltage coil is less. So it is generally of lightweight in nature and the sensitivity of the instrument is better. Now when there is a deflection in the wattmeter pointer then there is a deflection torque. This deflection torque is given by the product of voltage into current into cos phi. So this derivation we'll see in the measurement uh, when we we'll read the measurement uh, subject there we'll understand how the deflection torque is given by Vi cos phi. So here the cos phi is basically the power factor and product of voltage into current is basically the complex power. So we understand that the wattmeters are used to measure the power when there is a deflection in the pointer scale and this is directly proportional to the power. Now if we compare the electrodynamometer wattmeter and the induction type wattmeter for their physical connection as well as their working principle. So let us see one by one. So the first point is that in electrodynamometer wattmeter, the current coil is split into two parts, but a single pressure coil will be there. Whereas in induction type wattmeter, both current and pressure coils split into two parts each, 
place on each of the two arms of the two magnet. So we have seen that an aluminum disc was there and it was rotated between the current coil and the pressure coil. So that is induction type watt meter. The pressure coil current is very high in case of electrodynamometer watt meter, whereas induction type watt meter the current is small. Third point, the pressure coil is the moving coil. We have seen that the pointer is connected with the moving coil, which is the pressure coil, and it carries a high amount of current. But none of the coils are moving in case of induction type watt meter. Rather than what happened is that there is an aluminum disc which is placed between the two electromagnets that move. So basically we have one magnet at the top, another magnet at bottom, and there is an aluminum uh, which is rotating. So the coils are not physically rotated. Well, the fourth point is that the electron dynamometer wattmeter can be used both for AC as well as DC circuit to measure the power, whereas the induction type wattmeter only AC circuit it can be used. Whereas the fifth point is the pointer is attached to the moving coil which is the pressure coil. Here the pointer is attached to the aluminum disc because there is no rotating coil here. Sixth point we can see that it can be used in circuit even with fluctuation in frequency and voltage. Electrodynamometer wattmeter can be used to measure the AC and DC both. So even the frequency and voltage are fluctuating it doesn't matter it can be used to measure the power. However, in induction time, it can be used only with circuit having relatively steady values of frequency and voltage because we are generally using for AC only. So the frequency and voltage has to be constant. Now the final point is the fluid friction damping is used in case of electrodynamometer wattmeter whereas the induction time will have eddy current damping. So these are basically the important differences between the two different types of watt meters which are used. Now generally when we uh, measure the power using a watt meter especially the low power factor watt meter we require a multiplication factor which we need to uh, scale the values to the exact value. So what is that? Basically a LPF watt meter which is the low power factor watt meter is that instrument which used to measure the low value of power factor accurately that is the reason it is known as low power factor watt meter. The other power factor watt meter can be UPF that is the unity power factor watt meter because we know that the power factor value will lie anything between 0 to 1. So the close to 1 uh, which is there it is a unity power factor watt meter and anything below this will go for the low power factor watt meter. So low power factor watt meter because when power factor is low it means that inductive current is flowing in the circuit so it is used to measure the high inductive current. Now it is also used to measure the resistive current when power factor range between 0 to 5 to 1. So anything between 0 to 0 0.5 to 1 power factor where we can measure the resistive current to using the LPF watt meter. Now we require the multiplication factor of the watt meter is that parameter by virtue of which the finding of the small scale watt meter to get the power reading up to the multiplication factor times the multiply to get a small scale values. So in a low power factor watt meter when we are measuring the power for a very small range of the power factor the power is very small. So in order to scale that we required a multiplication factor which is used to measure the power up to a big range. So it helps to measure the power 5 to 6 times the power of watt meter to get the smallest scale value according to our convenience. So generally in laboratory when we are trying to measure the power we use a LPF watt meter and the reading shown on the watt meter is very small. But when we multiply with the multiplication factor we can get a reading up to 5 to 6 times the reading on the scale. So basically the formula which is uh, used to find the multiplication factor is basically the it is basically the ratio and the numerator is the voltage range into current range into power factor. So when we see a watt meter there the voltage range is mentioned, the current range is mentioned and the power factor will be mentioned and this will be very low divided by the range of watt meter scale that we are using. So this multiplication factor has to be first obtain for the watt meter and then whatever the reading is being shown on the watt meter scale with a pointer that need to be multiplied to get the actual reading of the watt meter. So here we complete the first unit in electric circuit analysis 
we have discussed in very detail the measuring devices and some of the principle like Ohm's law, what are the mass node in the circuit and from the second chapter onwards we are going to go into more deep into the theorems. So the first chapter is very important to understand the basic uh, fundamental which required for the electric circuit analysis. Thank you for now. See you in the next lecture.